Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. In this video, I'm going to be planting this Florida anise called Gray Ghost. Uh, this is a, um, a uh, variegated selection from a uh, native plant to the southeast United States, um, native to Florida and uh, along the uh, Gulf Coast area. Uh, pretty fast growing. It's a great screening plant. I'm up here in zone 7. These are hardy in zone 7 uh, to 10. And uh, up here in zone seven, I can't have them in the winter wind. They'll take a little bit of uh, damage in the winter. So I, I need to put them in a shady space and a uh, wind protected area. And I've got it between uh, two houses here, but it's gonna make a great screen for this uh, chain link fence into my, and in my neighbor's yard over here under a redbud tree where it's really quite shady. Really, really love this uh, selection. Let me give you a closer look at it. From closer up, you can see why it's called gray ghost. It has a bit of a gray uh, just undertone uh, to the uh, foliage color, especially in the newer in the newer growth on it, and then it has some variegation uh, as well in the uh, in the leaves. Just uh, narrow leaves that when you crush, they smell like anise, uh, which is not actually made from uh, this particular Elysium. It's made from a, a Chinese Elysium, but it does have a similar smell to it. Another super unique thing about this particular variety is it has light pink flowers. Uh, most of these uh, have uh, either white or uh, red flowers when you're shopping for different um, species of Elysium, but uh, the pale pink flowers are quite beautiful. Elysium like uh, kind of moist uh, but well-drained soil, and uh, I need to leave them elevated slightly here in my clay soil um, in coastal areas and stuff. I don't think it will be as necessary, but... I just checked to make sure the height was slightly above the grade. Soil is super dry right now. We've had a few rains recently, but they've been superficial rains. Okay. I've got it very, very dirty in the process. Okay. All right. So I'm watering this uh, very, very well. Again, I'm planting it in August, and we've had three very superficial rains here in the last week, meaning that it rained, and it appeared it rained, but it hasn't been enough to actually penetrate the, uh, the very dry soil down below it. So I'm watering this whole area very well, not just right at the base of the plant, but also out in this entire area around it. How's it ever gonna root out there if I only water right there? You know, and that soil out here is dry. So uh, that's one strategy I use is to try to wet the whole area. And then it has a reason to reach roots out into the surrounding soil. Gonna have to keep an eye on this plant. Um, it's competing with the tree. Anytime you're planting around an existing tree, uh, that can be that can be an issue. The uh, flowers on this plant have a kind of a little bit of a funky odor, but you have to be super close to them. It doesn't fill your yard up with a funky odor. odor. Sometimes those things get oversold, um, but I think it is uh, it's trying to attract flies uh, to pollinate it, uh, and uh, so that's its strategy. Again, it's a, this is a native to the southeast. It's evergreen. Uh, it has this beautiful variegation, this beautiful coloration. Uh, on the leaves. It's fast growing. This one can reach probably six to eight feet in a reasonable amount of time in just a few years. And again, has those light pink uh, flowers on it. With this morning sun coming up here, um, you can see why Gray Ghost is just a perfect name uh, for this uh, plant. But again, it's going to do a very quick job of blocking off this uh, space uh, from my uh, neighbor's uh, landscape and back over here to my screen porch, uh, which is behind me. I got this plant from, because pe people frequently ask me this, I got this plant from um, my friend Pat McCracken, who's introduced a lot of uh, interesting plants. His uh, nursery's called Garden Treasures, and he has uh, rotating weekends uh, during the year, and he was uh, open this past weekend. Don't know when his next uh, open weekend is, but he's in Zebulon, North Carolina. It's not that far from me. Again, that's Garden Treasures. Uh, this, this plant has a low um, poison severity. Um, it, is, it is poisonous, but the, you know it's not... It's not one of those that you have to be panicky about, but it does prevent um, most grazing animals from uh, from doing any damage to it, which you know I think is kind of nice. I'm in a yard full of rabbits, and they will not, they they definitely won't touch this one. And I think it's the perfect plant for this spot, mainly because it won't burn in any direct sun in this spot, except for a little morning sun and late day sun that's going to come under here. And um, it won't burn in the uh, winter time because I don't have it in a big giant open field where the uh, winter wind can cause it some damage. So 
Thank you guys for watching my videos. Don't forget to subscribe and uh, hit that bell notification so you're alerted when I upload videos. Thanks for watching.